Well, oh boy, this one's a biggie. Uh, so today we're talking about how the governor of Illinois and his family of influential billionaires are behind much of the queer theory push in this country today. Let's go. All right, so welcome back to the channel today, everyone. So we're gonna talk about how the Pritzker family is highly instrumental in the areas of trans care and why. But first, today's sponsor is me. So if you like this content, please consider supporting in any way that you can. I recently set up a donor box and you can use the QR code on the screen to donate there or consider being a paid member of my Substack, which I am currently working on ideas to make more exclusive content and put it up there. Uh, and if you can't support financially, please just share my content with anybody who might enjoy this information. Um, I appreciate all your support and I plan to continue this fight as long as it takes. Okay, so let's get into it. The Priskers are a very wealthy family in Illinois who made their money by starting the Hyatt Hotel chain. The main players I want to focus on are Jennifer, who is trans, and JB, who is the governor of Illinois, with a mention to Penny, who served as President Obama's Secretary of Commerce. So most of what I'm going to be covering can be found in an extensive report in Tablet Magazine by Jennifer Bilek. Link is below. So this family are major players in the medicalization of gender nonconforming kids. They fund a number of organizations that are pushing queer theory and the notion of gender as a spectrum concept. To highlight a few, the Human Rights Campaign Foundation, UCLA Law School, the National Center for Transgender Equality, the Transgender Legal Defense and Education Fund, the ACLU, and the World Professional Association of Transgender Health, WPATH, and many others. This is on top of funding multiple university health departments who provide care for GNC kids. Recently, the Lori Children's Hospital in Chicago gained a lot of attention for having a gender program similar to that of the Boston Children's Hospital, which I spoke about in another video. Uh, this hospital was funded with donations of up to a $1 million from the Pritzker family and a $15 million gift to start the Behavioral Health Department in 2019. And then, as reported by Chris Rufo last week, this hospital has been offering trans-friendly sex toys for minors. And then they are partnering with local schools to provide material to push queer theory and to get more patients, essentially. Um, but this is where the connection and possible conflicts of interest come for J.B. Pritzker, who is the governor of Illinois. Uh, last August, the government signed a new sex ed bill, which would begin teaching these concepts beginning in kindergarten. They state by second grade, or about seven years old, a child will be able to define gender identity and be able to discuss how people present their gender. By second grade? By seven years old, they will be able to define gender identity. What? Like, why is this important for kids to understand gender identity? It makes absolutely no sense to me. Kids need to be worrying about learning, you know, how to read and write and do math, not worrying about, you know, gender identity or worrying about their gender identity. You know, most kids kind of understand, um, you know, where they might be different. Not, they don't need to have this pushed on them. And all you really need to do is teach kids, you know, some people think and act a little bit differently than you, which is fine. Just treat everybody with respect. That's all kids need to know. They don't need to know other sexualities. They don't need to know gender identity. They just need to know that, that they're loved and accepted, not worrying about these concepts that really don't come into factor until, you know, they, they go into puberty and even after that, before they even know about sexuality. Leave the kids alone. Stop pushing this stuff and stop trying to indoctrinate. That's what this is. This is indoctrination on children before the age of second grade, you know, before the age of seven. Why? It makes no sense unless you're trying to push an agenda and indoctrinate children. Okay, so why the conflict of interest though? So the governor helped start the Lori Hospital and now they are partnering with local schools um, and then with the governor's help expanding all of this to the schools across the state, this is the first step to establish the school to clinic pipeline which Curtis wrote in his piece which is again linked below. Now, I don't really know why they would be funding such a distraction, uh, but I have to assume it benefits them financially. I mean, they have created this big money maker, as the woman from Vanderbilt explained. Um, so we need to see what investment his family has or who from these organizations are funding JB's campaign and their investments. 
I mean, this could go through hospitals, the pharma companies. It creates lifelong patients, and the return on investment is going to come from somewhere. And you don't do this without evil motives. I think this is just scratching the surface. But I do know these gender clinics shouldn't be working with schools as that creates clients for them. And it's a huge conflict of interest, let alone the governor coordinating the hospital that he helped found gain clients from schools he now oversees as governors. I mean, why would somebody who's in this position create this conflict of interest for himself if he's not benefiting in some way? Anyways, I will let you guys let me know what you think in the comment section. You know, click that like and subscribe button. Go support our sponsors. Follow me across all social media platforms, and I will see you next time.